light reflection and refraction we all know that light is a form of energy it travels in a straight line in this chapter we are going to study the reflection and refraction of light what is reflection of light when a light ray strikes a smooth polished surface like mirror it bounces back it is called as reflection of light we can study the reflection of light with the help of mirrors mirror is an opaque object with shiny reflective surface it is because of the reflection of light we will be able to see our images in mirrors what is refraction of light when a light ray passes from one medium to another medium its traveling speed changes and results in change of its direction this phenomenon is called refraction of light a straw in a glass appears to be bent this is due to refraction of light we can study the refraction of light with the help of lens lens is a transparent object usually made of glass eye glasses or the examples of lenses which use in our day to day life first let us study the reflection of light with the help of mirrors this is a plane mirror when a light ray strikes a plane mirror it get reflected back according to the laws of reflection the angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence image formation plane mirrors create virtual images that appear to be located behind the mirror at the same distance as the object in front of the mirror these virtual images are not real that means they cannot be projected onto a screen they are formed by the apparent intersection of reflected light rays when extended backward size and magnification the size of the image in a plane mirror is the same as the size of the object there is no magnification means that objects in a plane mirror appears to be the same size as they are in reality laterally reversed the images formed by plane mirrors are laterally reversed also known as left right reversed this means that If you raise your right hand in front of a plane mirror your image will appear to raise its left hand Now let us understand the reflection of light by spherical mirrors A spherical mirror is a curved mirror and it forms the part of a sphere Spherical mirrors are of two types one convex mirrors and two concave mirrors A convex mirror is a type of a spherical mirror that has an outward curved reflective surface A concave mirror is a type of a spherical mirror that has an inward curved reflective surface. To understand reflection by a spherical mirror, we need to know certain terms. Pole. The center point of the reflecting surface of a spherical mirror is called pole. It lies on the surface of the mirror. Pole is denoted by letter P. Center of curvature. The center of curvature is the center of the imaginary sphere. from which the spherical mirror is derived it lies behind the mirror in case of a convex mirror and lies in front of the reflecting surface of a concave mirror it is represented by the letter c radius of curvature the radius of curvature or of a spherical mirror is the radius of imaginary sphere of which mirror is a part principal axis the line joining pole and center of curvature is called principal axis We should remember that the principal is normal to the mirror at its pole that means at the point of pole the angle between the plane of the mirror and the principal axis is 90 degrees principal focus if a number of light rays parallel to the principal axis are falling on a concave mirror they all meet or intersect at a point on the principal axis of the mirror this point is called the principal focus of the concave mirror in case of a convex mirror the reflected rays appear to come from a point on the principal axis this point is called the principal focus of the convex mirror the principal focus is represented by the letter f focal length the distance between the pole and the principal focus of a spherical mirror is called the focal length and it is represented by the letter small f aperture the diameter of the reflecting surfaces of the spherical mirror is called its aperture In this chapter we are discussing about the spherical mirrors whose aperture is smaller than their radius of curvature let us see the relation between the radius of curvature and the focal length 
The relationship between the radius of curvature R and the focal length F of a spherical mirror is as follows. For spherical mirrors with small apertures, the radius of curvature is found to be equal to twice the focal length. We write it as R equal to 2F or F equal to R by 2. This means that the principal focus of a spherical mirror lies midway between the pole and the center of curvature. Representation of images formed by spherical mirrors using ray diagrams. Rules for making ray diagrams. Parallel ray rule. For a concave mirror, if a light ray passes parallel to the principal axis, after reflecting, it passes through the focal point F. For a convex mirror, if a light ray passes parallel to the principal axis, after reflecting, it appears to come from the focal point F behind the mirror. Focal ray rule. For a concave mirror, if a light ray passes through principal focus, after reflection, it emerges parallel to the principal axis. For a convex mirror, if a light ray is directed towards the principal focus, after reflection, it emerges parallel to the principal axis. Center of curvature ray rule. For a concave mirror, if a light ray goes from the object to the center of curvature, after reflection, it retraces its path back to the center of curvature. For a convex mirror, if a light ray is directed in the direction of center of curvature, after reflection, it retraces its path back. 4. A ray incident oblique to the principal axis towards pole of the mirror is reflected obliquely on the concave mirror or a convex mirror, the incident and reflected rays making equal angles with the principal axis.